In today's video, I'm changing the rear brake pads and discs on the Audi A3. Hello, and a very warm welcome to another video from Auto Night. Now, I've had some brake judder, more of a kind of pulsating pedal when slowing down to a, a final halt on this Audi for a little while now. I already changed the front pads and discs a while back, so it's unlikely, but not entirely implausible, that they could be the cause. But oftentimes, when you have brake judder, if it's coming from the front, you feel it through the steering wheel, and I can't feel anything through the steering wheel. So, on the balance of probability, it's coming from the rear pads and discs. Now, the rear discs look pretty sorry, so it's a good time to change them out anyway. The car has been raised and it's supported by an axle stand. And because the handbrake has to be off during this, I have chocked the opposite rear wheel and it's in gear. Just loosen the brake fluid reservoir cap to allow the brake fluid level to rise as it needs to when we push the pistons back in. So my suspicion is that these discs are slightly warped, distorted and we've got some pretty crappy looking pads in there anyway. I don't know what brand that is, but uh, they're coming out. And right here, I have some lovely Phoebe Bill Stein discs and pads. These came from Autodoc. Can't remember the price, bought them a while ago. Just finally getting around to doing these. To begin, I undo these caliper to caliper carrier bolts, 13 mil bolts, and I hold this with a 15 mil spanner. Caliper now needs to be eased off. Which can be easier said than done if you've got a bit of a lip going on here. These pads are really jammed up in these caliper carriers. They're meant to slide freely, but uh, they need persuasion. these terrible, cheap, crappy brake pads out of here. We loosen this little T30 screw. And the brake disc comes free. Now with many cars you need to remove the caliper carrier. It's great that on this one you don't because it saves some time. It's really important we now clean up these surfaces here so that the pads can slide freely which they weren't doing before. So get these pristine and get some copper slip on them which I'll do now. the same for these upper surfaces which are harder to get on camera. These surfaces are now pristine. Also clean that this hub area. to clean this up so that the new brake disc has a good clean mating surface so it goes on flush. So just a couple of considerations it's really important to check that these slide freely which they do there's special high temperature grease you can get to go inside here if they're short on that but these are fine if these are in any way seized they can be stripped down and cleaned up 
and then lubricated. Now, before I push this piston in, I always like to just use a tiny little screwdriver just to pull the boot back to make sure that there's no brake fluid leaking into there. That's absolutely fine, it's dry. These don't just push in, they wind in. I have got the tool to do that. I like to just put a little bit of WD-40 around here because it prevents this from snagging on this and becoming all twisted up when we wind this back in. Let's put a little bit of that on there, it does help. WD-40 dries up pretty quickly, it's not gonna hang around for long. So here's the tool for pushing the caliper piston back in. This was a pretty cheap one to be honest. It's only got this one adapter with different spacings here. That's going to be the closest I'm going to get on this. So we slowly wind in this caliper piston. As you saw earlier, I did release the brake fluid reservoir cap to allow this brake fluid level on this car to rise as it needs to. And that's all the way in. A little bit of brake cleaner just to wash off any WD. We'll let that evaporate. Apply some copper slip to the mating surfaces between the brake pad and the caliper carrier. And just around the hub where the disc fits over it to keep it corrosion free. Easier to get off at some point in the future. Which hopefully won't be a me problem. Time to unbox these discs. And here we go. Nice shiny new brake disc. Again, I always bang on about it, but this coating, I think that means a lot because uh, keeps them looking fresh for longer. Just comparing old with new. Yep. I'm happy that these are the same size. Whole spacings are the same. Give them a good clean up with some brake cleaner just to get rid of the oil from the manufacturing process that's there to protect them also in transit. We don't want that getting on our new brake linings. Fit the brake disc. Fit the grub screw. Just a final wipe because sometimes you get a little bit of this copper slip on the discs as you fit them. Again, don't want to contaminate the new linings, so just get rid of that. That is looking good. Let's get the pads in. So we have a nice new set of pads here and just compare old with new. All good. Note how easily they slide in. Now these surfaces have been cleaned up. That's how easily and freely they should move. And we can now refit the caliper. It's important to make sure that these are pressed in and that both of these springs are correctly positioned. The idea is that they're under tent, they place these under tension this way. Sometimes you see a spring protruding out through here and it's uh, been incorrectly fitted. 
tighter than the caliper to carry a bolt. And the lower bolt too. As I said, it's important that these springs remain behind here and don't poke out. This helps prevent the wheel from sticking. Job done on that side. Moving round to the offside rear, we do the same again. There's probably no point in me going through this step by step again. You've seen it on one side, it's the same for the other. Right, so there was me confidently saying that you didn't need to see me do the same thing on the other side. Well, it's turned out that it isn't quite the same thing on this side. Now I've just gone to push this piston back in with the tool and it is in, well, it, it won't budge. I mean, this, this piston is seized. I've got this 19 mil spanner on here for additional leverage. I, I, can, I mean, the force I'm putting onto this to try and wind this piston back in um, is, is ridiculous. So it needs a new caliper. I think we'll leave this video here. Bit of a disappointing end. I thought I was gonna get this done today and I have to go to work now for a late shift. I'll be working right uh, through to the early hours. So no more time to get this done today. Although I will try and pick up a caliper from Euro Car Parts on my way into work if there's time and uh, get this put back together another day. This really does highlight how important it is to have more than one car for me uh, with what I do. Uh, if this was my only form of transport, I would really be stuck. Uh, fortunately, I have, I have an array of cars and the motorbike now, which is uh, all good. See you again in another video very soon. Thank you very much for watching and goodbye.